Bonjour à tous et bienvenue pour cette rencontre Inside the Dog du 21e FIFO. Aujourd'hui, nous allons nous intéresser au film Family Faith Footy, a Pacifica Rugby Story, présenté en compétition du festival du 2 au 11 février 2024. Et cet entretien sera réalisé en anglais. Okay, so today we're talking about the film Family Faith Footy, a Pacifica Rugby Story. And to do so, we have the, the privilege to... Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. It's all good. Okay, so today we are talking about the, the film uh, Family Faith Footy, a Pacifica Rugby Story. Um, and uh, we have the great privilege to welcome with us uh, Jeremiah Tawamiti, the, the director of the film, and Adrian Stevenen, a uh, member of the production team uh, for this film. Um, Yerana, Jer Jeremiah and uh, Adrian. Yerana, Yerana. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. It's a great pleasure to, to welcome you on this occasion. Thank you for having us. Um, Jeremiah, you have already uh, participated in the festival before, um, mainly in the narrative short category. Um, it was in 2020 with the film Liliu, um, which won the, the best narrative short of FIFO that time. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it's the first time that you present um, a feature-length documentary for consideration. And um, Cherry on Top, it is selected in the competition category. Um, what, were, what were your, your expectations when you, when you submit the, the film for consideration at FIFO? Oh, um, well, firstly, thank you. It's, it's, it's great to be here, um, finally. Uh, to be honest, Uh, I, I wasn't quite sure how it would go. I know that um, sporting documentaries can seem boring for some of our community, um, but also too, you know, obviously with sports, a lot of our people are very good at sports and families are always there supporting. So I was really hopeful and, you know, and, and, and uh, I know that Adrian's um, had dealings with FIFA in the past. Uh, so, yeah, it was really... I guess hopeful, but I wasn't sure if it was going to be accepted, to be honest. No, oh, okay. And uh, Adrian, did you have any um, insights about that? I had, I had no expectations. I was very proud of the, the documentary that we've made, um, but I also know there's a, a high caliber that is submitted through the FIFA every year, and so that we have made it, we've made it through. We're very, very grateful. Um, Uh, and it's uh, it's nice to be acknowledged by by the people, some of the people that we really made this thing for, which is which is Pacifica people. So. Okay, okay, great. Um, the the film was originally broadcast on TVNZ, and um, yeah, and well, sorry if what I'm saying sounds a bit stereotypical, but. Um, when you when you watch the film, it feels like it was more designed for cinema release. I mean, more than a, a TV broadcast. Um, is there a particular reason for that? The, the short answer is that the the funding model here in New Zealand, uh, through New Zealand On Air, who we're grateful for their support, um, is primarily for for funding uh, television projects and so um, we needed support from uh, a network and TVNZ was very supportive of the idea and that's how it's ended up on uh, on a television first. Originally the idea was supposed to be two separate one hour uh, standalone pieces but then uh, through the production cycle there was a, su a suggestion from the network that it might be stronger as a feature and so we um, That was music to Jerry's ears, who likes making feature documentaries. And so, um, so yeah, we, we thought we'd go for it. But I've, I've never, this is the first feature-length 
uh, factual documentary I've ever made. So um, it was a very, very interesting learning experience. Okay. And um, Jeremiah, do you have a, a word? Um, yeah, I guess I feel like um, audiences uh, are now watching a lot of content on different platforms, which, in my opinion, are uh, a little bit more cinematic in their shooting style and presentation. And um, for me, even though I love TV, uh, I love watching things in the theater and, and trying to make things cinematic and uh You know, the shooting style and the cameraman that we had on, who was Tofi Lau, Arthur Rasmussen, he did a great job um, in bringing that, that that look, that visual feel. And also, too, I want I, I just feel like, you know, we're all on the same page as far as getting our our people into possibly a cinema or, or, or looking at this thing from a bigger perspective and that we deserve mm. to be seen on a bigger screen and, and, and celebrated and And, uh, you know, we're not, we don't need to be relegated to sometimes, you know, no offense to, to anyone, but sometimes we're just constantly put on at just weird hours for our people or very short snippets. Um, and, you know, it was important to, to Adrian and I and the rest of the team that, nah, actually, we should actually be given more time at primetime hours. And we we're just grateful that TVNZ, um, you know, completely believed in, in us and they gave us a great time slot and yeah we had a good amazing team uh, that put together I think a, a great film okay great um, yes talking about the time slot how long did the was the film in the making from start to finish really <laughs> about seven months seven months it was it was fast not even a year uh, we had to No, we, we, we found out that we'd received funding late November 2022, but we didn't really get started because December, most people leave on holiday and they don't come back uh, until sort of mid-January. So really started getting work in there early January, um, but we had to make that um, September deadline before the World Cup. So we always had a firm date that this thing needed to go out. And um, she was a challenge. Mm. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I guess. Um, so the so the, the the goal was to to air the film before um, the the rugby World Cup begins before it begins. So yes, the time shot was not that cool. <laughs> I mean, it's short. not not when you're shooting across. Wait, six when countries. you're shooting, uh, absolutely. And uh, <clears throat> uh, how did you get um, the, the first idea of the of the film, and um, how did it evolve uh, with time along with the, along the process of uh, filming and shooting and thinking, brainstorming? Well, the, the, original, concept, that, boss. Yeah, the original concept came from uh, well, a version of the of the story came from a, a sports journalist called Rigger Paul. Who um, is one of our, 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 our most respected, you know, rugby journalists here in New Zealand? Um, this idea came to me, and then we sort of worked together to flesh it out. I brought Jerry on, I called Jerry in quite early in, in the uh, thought process, and um, we sort of did, we wanted to make sure that we made something that was a celebration that um, a lot of stories that we can tell about Pacific rugby um, are not so positive because a lot of the things that the players endure are difficult and a lot of the way that the systems are set up are difficult. But there's been quite a lot told in that space, but there hasn't really been, in my view, a lot put on um, the celebration and the things that our, our people love about the game. and. And also just focusing in on the core values that many Pacific family, you know, particularly in New Zealand and, and some of the other colonies and islands hold dear, which is which is family, which is faith, and um, and gosh, we love ourselves some some rugby, so uh, football. Okay, and uh, do you, do you want to add something? 
Uh, yeah, I, I just kind of feel like, um, like Adrian was saying, a lot of our stuff that's been made so far has been, um, I actually had, to be honest, I had actually had some feedback and one of the, one of it, the feedback was that, uh, we always make rugby stories and, 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 and to me it was like, well, we've had a lot of, obviously because of what we do, you know, our, our people, yeah, we've had little short s stories and we've had, um, we've had docos here and there, but not a lot of them have been made by us, you know, and not a lot of them have been 90 minutes and not a lot of them actually gave the players the lead to tell their own stories. Mm -hmm. It was always a story crafted by another yes. person or somebody else's perspective. And really they were just given an opportunity to, to tell their story, to tell someone else's story, the production companies or whatever. So yeah, I'm, I feel like this is their story and we've had some amazing, you know, feedback and, and it always sort of goes back to well, what's it about? It has to be about us. It has to be what is, is dear to us. And then we can't go wrong. You know, we can't be accused of anything after that. If we let our people tell their story, their own story, and it might be different because not everyone obviously feels the same and believes the same. So as long as we, us guys point the camera and say, you just tell your, your truth, then nobody can say that we've, you know, twisted anything. Mm -hmm. um, and if people have connected, then we've done our job. Yeah. I think, too, what I would add is that conceptually, it's very, very, like, it's, it's massive. It's such a massive story, and to try and condense it to 90 minutes was really, really difficult. There were lots of amazing stories that we had to cut out. There were a lots of people that we wanted to talk to that we just realised in the end we can't fit in, which was, which was interesting. But what I think Jerry and I were quite clear on in the beginning it's actually a line from Jerry in an email he sent to me is, this isn't going to be another highlights reel, you know, and it needs to be more than rugby. And I think, you know, that's why many people have watched this story have felt something because it's been about much more than rugby. And it's been for, for audiences in New Zealand who don't really know much about what is important to, to Pacific families. They got a window into our community and a, and a positive window into our community, which is which is a good thing. Okay, um, yes, that, that was um, that's part of my next question because uh, all along the film we have the opportunity to see footage from um, the training camps in Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, um, New Zealand, um, and we meet with players uh, from different Pacific countries. Um, retired or still in business um, and really often during the film their comments are uh, very intimate and um, and deliver then deliver words of a rarely seen authenticity and um, yeah I, I, I have to admit that I had the blurry eyes a few times but um, I mean, even the families are on board, and um, this is something amazing in the film, I, I, I think. How did you achieve that? Did you already know the, the players, or um, well, how did you get them on board at first hand? Well, I think this, this is my personal view. We, we, we've got a, Greg Hall being a, a wonderful you know, a uh, journalist has a lot of contacts. And so he helped put us in contact with a lot of players. And we also had um, the help of uh, Sidney Naoko as well, who, who features in the documentary, who also knew a lot of the players. And so it was really important for us to get in front of them via Zoom, uh, particularly with Malakai and Charles, and just talk to them let them and share their, our vision with them and really say to them that this is your story and we'll let you tell your story and we don't really have much of an agenda except to tell your story mm -hmm. and I think um, when we were very open and honest um, with them and asked them that if there's areas you don't want to go then we don't have to go there this isn't that kind of documentary and with that came, no, no, you can ask us anything. And then and then I, my other view is that being a Polynesian crew, 
um, you know, with camera guys, sound guys, uh, Jerry is the director. I think that made a difference. I feel like they felt safe, a safety and an understanding, particularly with Jerry, um, you know, being there and conducting the interviews. That's, that's my personal view. Okay. Yeah, I felt, I felt like always, um, when we get in with these guys, you know, they're probably so used to just small microphone moments shoved in their face. Um, but I always believe that this, when we go to their house, for example, that we know how to act in just the little things of we'll take our shoes off. And then we tell our, mm -hmm. if we're with someone, a, a crew member who may not be Pacific Island, we say, Hey, take your shoes off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just those little things, you know, like, and then we'll, and, and, and it's just the, the two lows when you walk in between and, and just being able to hug our mum because it's like our mum as well. Mm. And just those little things that I feel go so far and will make a person feel so at ease and comfortable and say, oh yeah, cool. I can actually take down this guard sometimes and I can um, be myself. And I don't think a lot of people realize how emotional our people are. And so <laughs> when you peel away that guard, you actually open them up to something really special that not a lot of people see, just us. We're so used to having mm -hmm. our, um, you know, these big moments um, and festivities and sometimes intimate family moments that no one else will ever see. But for me, I want people to understand, actually, this this is how beautiful our people are. Like, mm -hmm. you have to see this. And these are the reasons why they play. And these are the reasons why the mums are on the sidelines cheering, going crazy, probably very, very close to getting arrested. But these are these are the reasons why, you know? So, yeah. Sorry, I probably talked too much on that one, but I feel no, like no, that's why. No, absolutely not. This is perfect. <laughs> yeah. I, I also feel like for many of the players, it was the right time for them to tell their story. Mm. You know? Oh, so, okay. Um, okay, okay. I understand. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so and the, when the fir the film first aired, um, what kind of feedback did you get from the from the audience, the general audience, and from um, the specifically rugby audience? The the the, the feedback that I've seen and I received that I received that we saw on social was was positive. Was um was really, really positive for for non-Pacific Islanders, even really close friends of mine, they said for the first time they got an understanding and an insight into our Pacific communities living here in New Zealand that they hadn't quite seen before or really fully comprehended. And I think for, for the Pacific community that engaged online and, and feedback that I've received is that there was a sense of pride and a sense of also that, that's our story and, okay. and they were happy to see it on screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think too, like, um, also Adrian, the World Rugby Channel, um, w World Rugby TV, I think it was. Um, rugby Pass TV, yeah. Rugby Pass TV, so it's kind of like the official uh, World Rugby Cup, um, Rugby World Cup online channel. And they have interviews with all the top players from South Africa, everything, and and then replays as well of different games, of all the top games, you know, throughout the World Cup. And Family Faith and Footy was the only kind of, well, it was a, a, a you know, it was a docker. <laughs> and uh, it, it was number one um, ahead of all these games and all these big superstar interviews. Wow. And that, for <laughs> me, that was really validating that um, it doesn't matter who's watching it, mm -mm. you know, the fact that um, we were able to create a story that had, you know, those core themes that are obviously important to everyone, which is family and, you know, rugby just happens to be the vehicle, but mm -hmm. everyone, everyone really liked it. And I spoke to someone last night and she's, she's Cook Island and she's from a um, rugby league family, but she watched it herself and she was in tears and she said, 
I would never watch a rugby documentary because I'm a rugby league family girl. And then she made her dad watch it and he's a, a rugby league player, obviously, and his family and he was in tears as well. And so there's been so, so many positive and affirming, you know, feedback and it feels good, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, well, it does feel good because um, when you have uh, those core values being um, promoted on the f uh, in the film, um, I, I can see why it wouldn't be um, so well received. Even um, as Adrian said, um, from non-Pacific Islanders people, um, Re regarding the, the, those uh, this audience with non-Pacific Islanders, um, what was the the, the, the main um, comment that you had from them? For me, it was just now I get it. Now I understand. Now I understand why the game means so much. Why family means so much. Um, and I think you know, for a lot of them, it was seeing the, the parents talking. They might see their friends who are Pacific Islanders in the workplace or at school, but they don't necessarily get to meet the parents and see what it means. Mm -hmm. Also, seeing just how important faith is to, to families, um, you know, and, and those comments, I think, and the, those insights were really were really moving for a lot of for a lot of people. I think in New Zealand, there's a lot of uh, maybe no understanding that Islanders have big families. But not really understanding that you know they're, they're, these are kids who are coming from 10, 13 mm. siblings, you know, and and how if one of them can, can make it, how life changing that can be for everybody. And I think intellectually people can understand that, but being able to see the emotion that came with that, I think, was really um, was different for a lot of people because they just don't get to see that. Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, so, um, I am being told that we are running out of time. Okay. So, um, uh, would you have, the both of you, uh, one last word that you want to add to, to encourage our viewers to, to watch the film? I'd just say, if you love Pacific people and you want to see, um, a story that's not about rugby, but is about um, the, the core values that we believe in mm. uh, across one, one speaker, then I, I, I can say, even if you don't like rugby, I truly believe you will love the story. Yeah, uh, I think Adrian's pretty much said it all. I think just come in with no expectations and, and, uh, and just sit and take it in and enjoy the ride. I think it's got something for everyone, to be honest. Um, yeah. And, and thank you guys for the opportunity. We're, we're most grateful. You're welcome. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mariva. Thank you, everyone, the team, everyone behind the scenes as well. Thank you. Thank Merci you to, to the both of you. And um, uh, good luck uh, with the competition. Uh, I wish you all the best um, because um, as you both said, the, the, the story, the film is more about uh, Pacific Islanders' values than about sports, finally. Yeah. And um, so, yes, good luck and um, congratulations on this um, amazing film. And, um, and uh, we wish you all the best for your upcoming projects as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, Mariva. Thank you. And, then, oh, yeah. and have a, a nice holiday season now. You too. So fast as you